Hello, welcome to the Battle in Barrow Gaming and part two of the Rochester Castle build. Um, as I said at the end of the last video, I didn't plan to make it two parts. It was just during the editing, it just seemed to warrant it. It got to about, it was going to be like an hour and a half. Who wants to watch an hour and a half of me waffle on in one go? So I decided to split up. So now we're going to get to the uh, real, the build of it, the main part. We're going to, we're going to build it. So let's carry on. Okay, yeah. Glad I've done this because it is looking good. I am terribly excited about this. This is looking like a keep. And it's not been that stressful apart from bone eye, bone stupid mistakes that I made myself, but ho hum. Hence, yeah, we're gonna have culverts at the bottom now. Rather than windows. But that's at the back, no one's gonna see that. We'll just pretend that didn't happen. Uh yeah, so this is the front. Um yeah, I'll let this dry and then we're going to make the towers. Um, there's going to be two towers at the back. They're going to be really easy to make, but the front bits are going to have sort of the entrance bit in. So it's going to have a um, full building here, which will be the main entrance. Coming down to a walkway to a gatehouse here, and the gatehouse and the full building I'm going to, I'm going to cut out with the tower with the turrets uh yeah the towers at the end so that's my plan so with the roof in place all glued together let's start on the uh the tower battlements um and i'm going to start with the two easy ones um because on this side here you're going to have the four buildings sticking out and this side here you can have the gatehouse and the stairways the two easy ones are these back ones uh so let's begin i say they're easy they're not really <laughs> it's simpler shall we say so what we're going to need is two strips of foam core that are four centimeters long and these are 32 and a half centimeters high uh, mark out some windows so their windows come up to the top two here and then an extra one about here in the same way crenellations cut out in the same way so it's just a centimeter and a half down as what's done up here pretty much but they're only sort of half a centimeter thick in between i think that's what these are actually they are so they're the same size and here you see this horrible little seam um, and the tower is going to cover that up nicely and of course you might be asking yourself well what about when the tower joins up you're still going to have this ugly seam well if you look at rochester castle uh, there is a design feature where there is sort of like a little wedge out the corner. So that can easily be achieved by doing something like that. So you've got this sort of L shape wedge stuck out. So that is perfect. So all to do that, you glue one flush the end of the building, like so. And then the other one will not go flush to the end. It will be dropped down a bit. So then you've got this, so it sticks out just a wee little bit. So what I should do is get the two back pieces uh, glued on and then we'll work on covering this bit up here. This is a big piece to show on camera. See it? Some glue. It's going to go... F this bit's the back wall. I don't know. There's two back walls really. But this is going to go flush with the back wall here. Um, which is opposite the four build, building. And so it's just going to go flush to the edge of the uh, piece. So the big four building will be here. And it'll come around to a gatehouse here and the stairs here. And there'll be another normal tower here. A normal tower here. So I'm going to glue that on. And glue the next one on in a minute so I'll come around here and glue this other side on and this is the bit that will have the overhang a little bit so you've got this little detail here which I think is perfect <laughs> what we're trying to achieve okay let's get on to the next bit that's that we're gonna need to cut out two two bits here uh, that are gonna go sort of here and here uh, but also we're going to need to cut a little nook out for the uh, battlements so it can slot over the top. 
These are again four inches, and I think I worked out they're just eight centimeters high. So eight centimeters high. So you're gonna need two of those. I've already got here. And the nook's about three and a quarter centimeters high. And it's about a centimeter uh, thick. So that'll go here. And then this bit will go here, forming a sort of towel when it's all in. But you're still gonna have that hole there. So for that, a bit that's four by four, uh, sort of textured, and that's just gonna sit into here. Oh God, this is so big. Very difficult to see, that's gonna sit into there. Um, but we also need doors to come in and out of the tower. Now I'm following Rochester Castle from pictures and memory, and this here would be what is now the round tower, and it has a door on both sides. Okay, this one here has a door just going this way. Well, this tower here just has a door going in and out that way, and I think this one has two. I can't remember, but I'm only putting one in. Let's go here. So you've got a complete walkway going across the top of the um, four building. So I'm doing it. So that's five doors. Um, for these, I'm just you can. I've done a uh, an article online about doors, but I'm using some pre-built ones I've got laying around. It's just resin ones. Um, plaster of Paris ones. Now you'll notice, probably won't because of this is so big, that if this goes here, it'll be thick enough to get a door in. So I'm going to sort of cheat and put it against the uh, battlement wall here and just cut across like so. So it'll be cut out like that. So I'm just going to that in, in place where I'm going to want it, draw around it, I'm going to cut that out, I'm going to do that on both pieces, but before that I'm going to glue this in, and what I've done here is I've measured, like I did with the roof here, I've measured down where I want it to go, you could, if you didn't really want to, just glue it straight onto the battlement here, because it's not really where anyone would walk, but I don't know, I think I just want to raise it up just ever so slightly. It's only half a centimetre, but to me that makes much more sense. I'm going to glue that in, cut the doors out, glue these in. Towers up here, I've seen, and I've just put this tower, which is going to be the uh, four building tower. I think this will be the next one to do as it's easier. So, this is just the same height, which is 32 and a half centimeters, and made in much the same way. Windows cut in, but it has a bit that sticks out four centimeters, and this is 19 centimeters high. And in here I've just pre-prepped painting the inside because we've got the four building to add on. Uh, this is a bit that is um, eight centimeters and six mil wide and 19. And again, same crenellation pattern put in and the windows cut in. And that will go over the top because the four building doesn't have the nice detailed uh, wedge shape. Thing. I don't know what you call that, that this has, so it's got to be a proper building. So by making it eight centimeters and six mil, it means it's going to come along the wall here for uh, um, eight centimeters. And I've got another bit here that is four centimeters thick, 19 high, that will go underneath, that will sit in here. Uh, on this bit here, there is a door that is six centimeters high, and that's going to be the entrance. Why six centimeters high? Because um, each bit of foam, the stairs, going to be made of foam, which is six mil, so that will give us ten steps. 
uh, ultimately leading up to it, but we're going to put a gatehouse here, which we'll get to in a minute. And then I've just got this bit of um, foam, which is seven centimeters and four mil that will just sit inside here, like so. So all I'm going to do now is uh, glue this into place. Right, so the four buildings done now. Um, glued it all in place, see here, and I've just added in these bits and this bit here as we've done before. So that is it done. Um, one thing to note is originally this would have had a built a roof, much the same as we got here. But because of the scale I'm using for wargaming, there's not really enough room for it here because it also has a door here, which I wanted. So I'm leaving the roof out, but it does mean models can come out the door and sort of step here. You can't see Hugo in there. There's Hugo, so you can see him there. So I'm not having the roof there. So that's a little bit of uh, artistic license. Next. We've got to do the last tower, which has a gatehouse attached. Now, to begin with, the best way to do is just to have a bit that is same height as a normal tower and cut out the same way as a normal tower, like this. And um, one thing I should just quickly bring out on the top bits of towers here that I've done, I forgot to text the inside. So I've done done it on this one, and I'm going to do it on this one, but. I have to try and rectify that by hand later on. But anyway, yes, yeah, so we can have this. But also, it's going to be another four centimeters wide, and this is eleven half centimeters uh, high here with crenellation and a window. And then at the bottom, it comes up three centimeters. Why three centimeters? Because that is exactly five steps lead that will lead up to this gatehouse, and it will have a door cut into it, which is the same shape as our other doors we've made but one thing to note is here it's just over a centimeter wide and here it's half a centimeter wide and the reason for this is this is going to attach flush to this wall here and then hopefully you can see this down the bottom there this will have a next bit put on wide so when it's put on wide you've got equal space in there so that's what that's about so that's the first part of this done, the simplest part. Next, we've got to do the bit that leads on. So I'm probably going to uh, glue this on. Um, I might pre-paint this, just throw glue it on, just to make it easier, or pre-undercoat it. Sometimes it makes things like that easier. <sighs> this bit's uh, actually worrying me. All right, next up, I want to make some a port collar so it will go behind the door. So for this, I'm going to come in with a coffee stirrer that is uh, about half a centimetre long and just cut it down the middle, like so. And so I've got two here already. And at the end, I'm just going to try and angle it off a bit so it's a bit spiky. So I probably have four, just because you've probably got more dainty hands. You can probably do more. What these would do, these are going to glue onto the back here. I'm only going to get four in, like so. I'm going to cut a bar across. So, for that, I'm going to need a bit that's about the width of the door. Just, just eyeball this and cut it in half. And that will glue on like so, so it sort of will look like a portcullis. So I'm going to get that done and show you how it looks. So there you go, that's what it looks like from the front. The back, obviously, looks something like a portcullis, but it's only from the front we're interested in. It'll look like that. I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to paint all this black, the back bit, because it'll be easier to do that now. Probably going to need to do that on the other side when we do the other side of the gate because it has two portcullises. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. So try and get it the right way around. Yeah, all right with that. While you're waiting for that to dry, you can work on the other main bit of the wall. This is just another 32 inch bit made in exactly the same way as we've done before, except here, come up 11 and a half inches 
and three mil in because this will be the gap for this so it'll slot over like so and it goes on so you can do that and then once all this is dry, oh, better let this dry. Uh, once all this is dry, we can do the top bit as normal before working on the rest of the gatehouse. Okay, so we're going to be building the walkway and this sort of guard tower here. So for this, we're going to need the other side. So I've just got here a piece. So it's effectively uh, three and a quarter just under 3.3 centimeters and 4 mil was it 6 mil for this it's got crenellation pan cutting window and a portcullis as before the doorway and this will get put here so in total it juts out 4 centimeters just what we want so we'll do that in a minute and I will be painting all of this black before we carry on then we've got the front. This is quite a tricky bit. I'm going to glue over here. Um, the front's going to sit here like so. And it's looking like that so far. So overall, this bit here is 17 here. It's 3.6 at its shortest because the floor is going to go down. I can't get anything in. The floor's just going to go down to have a little lip. Uh, the tower here is 11 and a half, same as what this height is here, and it is 4 and 6 because it's quite a big tower in the front, so it juts out a bit more. It's going to go here, and up here at its highest, I've got to cut it down a bit, but it's going to be 6 centimeters at its highest, and I'm going to cut this bit out here. Here, so we have a sort of stepped crenellation, you can't really see that on the camera, but I'm going to cut it out. Uh, putting crenellations up here. It's also going to have a doorway cut out here. So what I'm going to do is get this cut out and show you how it looks. But that's going to be there. And then we're going to add the floor in, which will come basically a straight piece with a little nook cut out for this tower. It will stick out to about here, square, and it will step down here. So we're almost done, but it's the most complicated bit. And that's what that bit looks like when it's all cut out. That's just going to go here. The eagle eye amongst you may spot that the full building in proper Rochester Castle juts out more here. Sort of probably the same thickness again. I didn't do that because of room. I said I wanted to, for this to be one of the uses was for use in the Warhammer Fortress, and there wouldn't be enough room. So if you want to go more accurate, chuck this out more. But it does certainly capture the feeling of Rochester Castle. Uh, yeah, so this will be assembled like so. And then just be a floor going along. Uh, not all the way, because there's going to be steps. So I'm going to do the floor, probably go along to here, just so it's got something to glue the steps onto. But here there's going to be a wooden walkway, sort of going along. I'm not too sure if I'm going to design it so I can lift it out or not yet. I don't know. I don't know. Do I just glue it in place? It's not a toy set, is it? It's a, a play toy play set. But yeah, hopefully once I've got this bit done, these steps over here will be easier. This is probably the hardest part of the entire build, this. Next up, a piece that's uh, 4 by 12 with a little... Uh, notch cut out so it fit around the uh, tower I'm just gonna glue that in so and what we can do now is glue this bit into place and that's that part of the walkway done ish just gonna drop some stairs in here that's easy enough done so I'm just going to glue this in and put some stairs in. Okay, so what I've done here is made stairs, um, some steps. I'm just going to whack this on with hot glue. Uh, put this in here, like 
So I've got a little bit here that I'm going to glue underneath the doorway here because this will help support the uh, walk, wooden walkway that's going to go on. Let me put this on. So when we get to the wooden walkway bit, I'm about to rest on there, and now I'm just going to glue uh, this on. So I don't know how I'm going to glue this on with hot glue or. PVA, I don't know. I'm just going to make the stairs that come down here now. These make for four centimeter bits. I've got to cut a groove round for this tower. And I'm just going to have two inch steps going up. So I'm going to start at the longest point. I'm just going to attach it via a hot glue gun stick, the bottom step, just for quickness. You can really see I'm using this hot glue gun in this one. Cool. I'm going to stick two more steps on and then cut it to size, which we'll cut back to. Okay, so the stairs are sort of glued in. I'm going to come in, just start hacking out a little wedge. Maybe this would have been easier before I started gluing all the levels of stairs in. But we can kind of do archaeology and cut off one row at a time. Is should fit snugly in here like this, which I can glue this bit in now. And just got to put a plate along here, and we are almost done. Next up, going to make the sort of side bit of wall here. This is 14 centimeters by three and a half high. Um, comes up to sort of six mil here comes up six mil from the end of this step here draw a line brick texture cut that out <coughs> in my haste to uh, get this done I forgot to put a little bit of uh, foam here so I'm quickly uh, just do that now just so I've got something to uh, stick the steps onto there we go easier to have done beforehand it still doesn't matter because what we're going to do now is glue some steps on here I'll say steps some more crazies just made from coffee stirrers uh, I'm just gonna stick them on with PVA to give me a bit of working time to work out how many I need Five, that'll do. So I'm going to stick those in with PVA. I should do that now. So I'm going to do now is come on with some PVA. I'm just going to run it down the edge on the joins here. PVA down a little bit. Just put PVA down the end there. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is come in with some modeling sand. And this adds square dust and grime might have blown into. So this will add a bit of extra detail work and it'll be great for covering up the bits where perhaps you're Cutting isn't as accurate. You can see here, go back down in there. Let's 
seat. <coughs> I'm just going to go around and do all that all over. Okay, and this is how it's looking now. Its main construction is all done. So we've got all the uh, sand bits in there, sand bits in there, sand bits going around here. Before I do come into painting though, what I'm going to do is just come in with a sculpting tool. Let's see if I can get this on camera. And I'm going to put on these edges here where I think roll it over. I'm just going to put just a few lines, just a bit of detail. Just do. See, I've done it here on this one. Just to blend it in a bit. Okay, got it undercoated, but I forgot one thing during the build, and that's the buttresses that these are that run here. They go up here. Uh, so these are just simply strip of uh, foam 26 centimeters long two centimeters wide and it will just go here so uh, this part here there's one this back bit there's two that go there even though there's only one that remains because the other one was demolished when this tower collapsed and was rebuilt as a circular one uh, this wall here just has the one here and this one here has two which will cover that because this is going to be an interesting one because it goes around the tower. Once you've got your strip, you're just going to come in and sort of cut a 45 degree angle. Uh, doesn't matter too much about measuring it. You can get away with eyeballing it. And then come in, so it's got an angle like that. And we're just going to glue this here like so, and then off camera I'll paint it. But we mentioned we've got to get a bit creative with this bit here. Uh, the simplest one, of course, is just this one, which is just gonna go here, but we're gonna have to cut it around the step here. So I'll do that off camera. This one here, it's gonna run down here, is a bit finicky. Um, but it's just going to be a shape like that. So this bit here is the length from here to here. <laughs> and it's got a little lip that goes around so I can slot it in over the crenellation of the full building. Stick it in there and I've got to trim it down and cut it. So I will do that off camera, those two bits, but that's all I'm going to be doing here. It's got the uh, roof to complete now. Um, looking to research, this would have been wood and it would have had been held in with strips of lead. I'm just gonna put a wood pattern in here and I'm gonna cut little thin strips, V-shaped strips I'm gonna glue over here and they'll be painted sort of metallic when it comes to painting. So what I've got here is little strips of chipboard, a few mil thick, that are nine centimeters long, scored in the middle and folded over. And then these will be uh, glued in here, in this sort of formation. These aren't glued in yet, but I'll do that in a minute. So we're gonna go across like that, and these will be painted uh, a sort of a lead color. To complete the roof, take a bit of chipboard that is uh, 12 and a half centimeters and about just under a centimeter wide, score it down the middle and fold it in half. To fold it, you might wanna put the ruler behind it just to give some uh, sort of leverage to it, like so. And you'll end up with something like this. And all we do, cover the underside in PVA and we just glue it onto the top here. And let that dry. This is storm cloud, but it, you can get away of using this, which I'm using a bit of a mixture of both actually, because it's pretty much the same gray. This is natural gray, it's gray five. Uh, just come in, and what I do is uh, load the brush up, get as much off as possible. I actually use my board for this, so I'm just gonna. And I'm just going to go up in up and down motions. And as 
much as the brickwork pattern showing as possible. So there's a lot of castle to do. Probably a bit heavy here on the dry brush, but you can rectify that later on. The window is just going to come in with sort of a fairly loaded brush and just going to try and paint the air. Uh, the grey around them. Again, not too worried about full coverage because of the black undercoat. So this is how it looks like all grey. I've painted the uh, roof as well in a brown and the doors and the walkway. But what I'm doing now is coming in with whoop, this uh, coastline kind of coastline it's effectively sort of medium tan I'm just going to come in and dry brush over just because watch the castle isn't grey kind of like more like a sandy stone so this will compare to that compared to that I'm just going to go over and do this all over. The next dry brush is an even lighter tan. It's called Ivory Tusk. Uh, and it's just going to be an even lighter sort of dry brush. Like so. So got it to this stage but I've got to make a, I'm going to wash it in sort of a brownie black colour so water, black paint and this sort of shade of brown uh, don't know the ratios, going to make it up as I go along so this is like a really dark brown wash really you can see it and I'm just going to it all over, help if I did it on camera. You see that there? It really helps bring out the detail of the bricks and sort of gets rid of the grey. I think when it when it's too grey. Probably not as light as what brown as Rochester Castle, but we are trying to get to that ish. And carry on, see what it looks like when it's dried. And now I'm going to come in with some more of that darkest tan coastline uh, and give it another dry brush. And if you're thinking this man doesn't know what colour he wants this to be, you'd be correct. And this is going to be how it's looking now. I don't want to go over too much. I don't want to ruin all the wash. Uh, but I think that is going to be its final colour. Next up, I'm going to be painting all the metalwork in lead belcher. So that's uh, all this bit up here and these bits. And I've already done the uh, Melt work on the doors. Here we are. Hopefully, you can sort of see all that. And that, once we've done that, is pretty much it painted. And now, after painting all done at this stage, it's looking like this. I'm quite pleased with it. The colour in the end. Looking at the top. Back. So it's it's effectively sort of a brown grey, which is kind of what I wanted to go for. I mean, the real Rochester Castle is more sort of sandstone colour, but I needed it to match in somewhat with how I'd painted the Warhammer Fortress. And yeah, it sort of matches quite well. 
but we've got a bit more detail to go with because as you can see the bottom here I've got some grass on the bottom that I want to add on to here so we're going to do that next so for this I'm just going to get an old paintbrush with some PVA on I'm just going to not heavy or anything just run it along helps if I do this in camera of course very difficult sometimes to build terrain not on camera when you concentrate on too many things I'm just going to do this I'm going to do it all along one side here so on here, the bottom part of the step. And what I'm going to do, I'll show you all the paint here, to come in with some green flock, just dab it on, bash off any uh, excess. Not too heavy. It's coming along something like that is what we're looking for. So I'm going to carry on doing the uh, rest, rest of the uh, keep, and it's only just sort of slightly at the bottom here, just so it looks a bit like a bit overgrown at the bottom, nothing mega. And pretty much done now with the uh, construction. Here it is, all painted, flocked. It's looking pretty cool. But if you remember, there was a uh, in the first part, I um, wasn't going to glue on one of the sides, so I said I was going to do something inside. Well, that is because what I'm going to use is put some lights in there. And for this, I'm just going to use the simple uh, LED lights. And what these are, they, you, I'm going to put them into a bottle, so it looks like a bottle top. But they're rechargeable with a USB port. And so just have some light. So what I'm going to do for this is for now I'm just going to tape them in. Uh, it's going to come in. I'm just going to make sure they're not around the window that much. And I'm just going to use for now masking tape. Probably in time if I'm happy with it I'll come in and glue it but I won't do it for this video. What I'm going to do Coming a bit of masking tape. Stick it in like so. And I'll do a bit up here, a bit there. So I'm going to do that off camera. I've got it all taped up like this, and now I've just got to turn the lights on and have a look. And turn the main light off because make it easier to see. Uh, that's what it looks like. You can sort of see the light coming in. What if I do that? Got some lights in there. Cheap, easy, rechargeable. Looks cool. So that's it. Pretty much done. So uh, let's have a, uh, a look at it all set up. <laughs> 